Okay guys, so in today's video we are going to talk about the topic of frequency or muscle stimulation because you'll see a lot of people, rightly so, say that you need to stimulate a muscle multiple times per week to get the most bang for your buck. And the research is kind of cloudy in the area because of a few confounding factors, but it has shown that if you did the same volume on one day, like you did it on a Monday, and then you didn't do that same workout or that same volume of work until the next Monday, or if you split it up between, say you did six sets on the Monday in that group, six and six, or you did three sets on the Monday and three sets on the Thursday, and then repeated, you do seem to get a better response from splitting up that volume throughout the week and getting multiple muscle stimulations, okay? So that's what it has shown, and anecdotally, that is generally what natural trainees will find. Now, of course, if you are enhanced, you can probably get away with a lot less. With this information, however, it is one of those things where people start extrapolating from minuscule data, okay? So people will say, oh, multiple muscle stimulations per week is optimal, okay? And yeah, okay, I can, I can agree with that because generally speaking, that is what is shown. If you train yourself anecdotally, you will kind of see that. If you train a muscle or a movement multiple times per week, the law of specificity and the law of repeated efforts will dictate that you will get stronger at that movement, you will build more muscle in that muscle group or whatever you are stimulating multiple times per week. So it makes sense. However, what people tend to do with this is do a workout that has say 20 sets of volume. Right? And then they hear this research, they read this research, and they go, okay, cool, so that means multiple stimulations per week is better. Cool, we're still with them. Then what they do is they do that 20 set workout twice per week, okay? So they've effectively doubled their volume, okay? And yeah, that can be fine if you are able to handle that amount of volume, okay? You can go 40 sets per week, and that is your, that's at the top level of your ability to recover. Cool, now you can still progress with that, but the majority of people aren't able to actually recover from that amount of work, okay? So just because it says that multiple stimulations per week are optimal, ideal, or whatever, it doesn't mean it has to be the exact same stimulation, okay? So you potentially would have gotten better results from doing your 20 sets and going, okay, I'm gonna do 15 sets on the Monday and then five sets on the Thursday or whatever it is, whatever way you're breaking it down throughout your week, you know? So that's generally what I would recommend doing, not just doing your normal workout twice and essentially doubling your volume, that can work and in instances that may be what's required to progress, but the majority of the time that's not what is going to be required to actually have you progressing long term, okay? So generally what I like people to do is kind of get it out of their mind that they are doing the same exercises, okay? And even the same muscle group in terms of the way you have targeted it. So. If you look at it, people kind of get down to really just following their same exercises, the same workout structure, the same pattern of their workout. Like they'll always do a squat pattern first, then they'll do a hip hinge, then they'll do a lunge, and then a hamstring curl, or whatever way it is. Or generally you'll see people go, oh yeah, it's squat, then leg press, then leg extension, then it's ordeals, then it's hamstring curls, and then maybe some calves if I throw them in. And then that's what they repeat twice per week, right? So it's always their quads first, and it's always their hamstrings last as a kind of a tag on. So what I like to do is get people to reframe it in their mind and go, okay, cool, that's my workout done with that general setup. Now my next workout, I'm going to either attack those muscles with a similar stimulus or a completely different stimulus and exercise order, okay? And what I mean by that is I'm not saying like, oh, we're trying to confuse the muscles and you know switch it up, different angles and stuff like that. Like, yes, that does have some place in a program in terms of if you just do the same exercise over and over and over, you are going to get uh, to a point of diminishing returns where you're, ju where you're just hammering the same musculature and uh, nervous system activation. So you're not getting a huge amount from that, you know? So if muscle building is your goal, what I would generally tend to do is get people to do say, their six sets of quads on a Monday and then three sets of quads on a Thursday, you know? and. I would stick to the heavier compound type movements on the Monday. So we're really aiming for progressive overload, but keeping that tension on the musculature. And then on the Thursday, the goal is more kind of, we'll call it metabolic stress. And although we are still looking for progression, the main thing we're looking for is actually getting a lot of volume 
on the target muscle in as a minimum amount of work, if that makes sense. So we're still stimulating enough, like we're getting to a threshold that yes, we've actually stimulated that musculature enough to elicit some sort of hypertrophic results. Generally, that's gonna be somewhere in the region of three to four sets. And I'm also gonna pick an exercise that isn't as fatiguing, perhaps, as some of the other exercises. So you might go, okay, cool, on the Monday I have uh, front squats and I have hack squats, cool. Okay, they're the same kind of pattern, but we are getting slightly different kind of recruitment patterns from those because maybe you go, you know, proper ass to grass with the front squats and then with the hack squats, you're kind of stopping at that 90 degree kind of position with your knees, you know? So maybe that's the way you do it and that's how you're overloading those two movements. Or maybe you're doing completely different movements, but they're both attacking quads. And then on the Thursday, you do something like a leg extension where the goal is, you know, actually fully connecting with that musculature, really contracting it nice and hard and actually feeling the cellular swelling, the metabolic buildup in those muscles, right? So that's how I would do it. Then again, if you were going from that kind of same workout ideology and you're going, okay, I usually do hamstrings after quads on the Monday. On the Thursday, I would do hamstrings first. So they're getting the top end of your intensity ability. So you're actually able to really push your hamstrings because generally people focus on their quads and their posterior chain is just lackluster by comparison. And I know for some people, hamstrings are a bit of a muscle that it's, it's kind of hard to connect with. And that's both from a technical point of view in terms of people aren't doing the exercises correctly, but also because they've generally done workouts where they have put quads first. So they've really expended themselves. Like you do a really hard set of squats and your hip hinging or your uh, knee flexion exercises after that, they're not going to be as well connected. They're not gonna be uh, as, you're not gonna put forth your best effort with those because you are somewhat fatigued from doing the squats, okay? So it makes sense, you know? So I would put those kind of exercises first on your Thursday workout and have the quads as almost like a tag on type workout, you know? So that's generally what I want you to get thinking with this kind of exercise frequency type of deal. You wanna think, yes, okay, I do wanna stimulate that musculature multiple times per week. Generally, two times to start with. Some people can kind of push that up to three. Some people can even push it up to four. Again, depending on your overall volume, but likely there is going to be a, a, a point of diminishing returns. Like you, your body still needs to recover. And while, yeah, you can squat every single day, the people that do that generally do a really, really low volume. Like if we're talking one, maybe three sets, and that's all they do for their squat pattern, you know? so you have to kind of think in, am I doing, like what are my overall goal? Am I trying to build musculature or am I just trying to get really, really neurologically efficient at a certain exercise? Because that's gonna be a different style of workout, a different kind of structure to your workout. So you do have to obviously identify your goals and then program accordingly. But you would be surprised how little volume it actually takes to elicit some sort of hypertrophic response or some sort of uh, muscle building or strength building response, you know? So generally three to four sets of a really well executed exercise for that muscle group will get you quite a large return on investment. And I know a lot of people are going, nah man, I do like 20 sets, 30 sets for my workouts and I need that to grow and it's like, yeah, of course you need that to grow because half of those sets, you're not fully connecting with the musculature, you're not tracking tempo, you're not tracking rest periods, you're not progressively over, you're not doing everything that needs to be done to actually progress, you know? Like I would rather see someone do three perfectly executed, 100% control, 100% tension on the required musculature, then see someone do 20 sets of, you know, four or five different exercises where they're just going through the movement, whatever it is, you know? so. That's what I want you to get thinking with this kind of frequency debate. Like what do we actually talk about when we are talking about that stimulation multiple times per week? Are we saying it has to be the exact same stimulation or are we saying, which I think the literature would kind of more likely suggest, and I think anecdotally it would more likely suggest, are we suggesting that it has to be a stimulation or a sufficient stimulation to get a response, but it doesn't really have to go a huge amount above that, you know? so. I like to look at it, there's a lot of different things, there's a lot of different modalities, there's a lot of different uh, muscle groups, there's a lot of different movements that you could potentially get stronger at, bigger at, faster at, whatever it is. Why would you limit yourself to you know three or four exercises and that's all you do? Like yes, you might find exercises that are really good for your body, they really suit you mentally, they really suit you physically, biomechanically, 
and yes, you do want to really maximize your your adaptations to those. Like if you're saying like front squats fit you perfectly, you know, you can remain perfectly upright, all you feel is your quads, then perfect. Get really, really, really fucking strong at those. But that does not mean that you just throw away the baby with the bath water and go, okay, cool, I'm just gonna forget about all these other uh, squat pattern movements. You know, maybe they have a place, maybe, you have to bring them in at certain times in the in the programming. Maybe, you know, I don't know, front squats are really good at stimulating your quads, but, you know, they actually make your knees hurt a little bit or your upper back hurt a little bit or whatever it is. So you have to bring in different modalities. So do have a think about when you are designing your program. When we talk about frequency, yes, multiple stimulations are good throughout the week, but what are we actually talking about when we say stimulation? I would think it would suggest that it is, you know, a sufficient stimulation, and then you need to find out what is a sufficient stimulation for you to continue progressing with your overall physique, with your overall strength, muscle, all your goals, you know? Especially if you are an athlete and you're kind of going, yeah, okay, the research says multiple times per week. If that stimulation is taking away from your ability to progress in your sport, then you have to really start questioning, why am I doing something multiple times per week if I am actually getting worse at what I want to be getting better at, you know? So do take that into account when you are looking at your overall frequency of exercises, of uh, stimulating a muscle group. What is the actual goal? How much volume do you actually need to achieve that goal? And then what, what maybe areas are you missing in a, a workout structure? Like maybe you never actually get into that full, you know, quad, uh, flexion like you're not you're never fully shortening that quad in your workout you're just doing squats lunges um i don't, I don't know what else leg presses whatever it is and like you are really really weak uh, with that rectus femoris you're just not not strong in that position where you're extending that leg up from and then closing off the hip and extending the knee so you need to get strong in that position maybe that's what you bring in in an extra workout and you're going that's what i'm focusing on with this workout and it's not as fatiguing as some of these other movements but i'm able to slowly progress with that. So that's what I want you to think about with this whole frequency debate. Just have an idea of what are you actually trying to achieve with your weekly program structure, with your weekly training structure, and then obviously how that fits in with your monthly, yearly, and biannually, whatever it is, uh, structure. You know, you, you need to kind of think this more long-term rather than just doing the same exercises because, oh, they are the best exercises. Like you need to think, okay, how am I actually structuring this throughout the week?